Uh, Jerry, just your reaction to that. Have you seen any of those things happen, work, not work, in your experience? Well, and it, it, the interesting thing about it is, and you're right, Lawrence, we don't quite have that ability to say, you know, we're going to fire you all. We have, we have a lot of labor laws. It um, gets even more fun when you go over to Europe. <laughs> but having said that, that whole concept of kind of that, that getting to know each other and trust. I mean, I'm sure most everybody in here has probably at least had some sort of exposure to um, Lee and Sione's book on the five dysfunctions of teams, right? And at the base of that, it's all about building trust. And the true way to build trust, the exercises that we give people are get to know the people you work with. Know about them in a way other than on the job, what they're doing. Know their family, know where they come from. And that begins to build that trust. And then people do feel we're in this together. So we're pulling in the same direction. And you don't, you know, it's tough enough to survive out there in the competitive market against your competition. If you layer on top of that all the internal competition, it just makes it virtually impossible. So yeah, a a lot of that plays very directly into what we do. And uh, that is likely not going to change, right? I think that's only going to get tougher and tougher. Uh, I'm going to ask one more question, and uh, then we'll throw it out to you. Uh, I I referenced accountability earlier, and I think there are a lot of people in the audience who struggle with getting their managers and their leaders to feel a sense of accountability toward supporting this effort to, when people leave a classroom or leave a coaching session, to keep the learning going, keep it alive. It's hard if you're the teacher and you're solely responsible for that. What do you think? I mean, should the the manager or leader have some accountability and what should they be doing? Throw it out to any of you. Joe? I'll start off. Um, I think accountability is key. Uh, And and the short answer to your question, yes, I do think the leader and the manager has a responsibility. We can talk about that in the context of accountability. Um, From an exec comp standpoint, in terms of sustaining skills, uh, we see it as a cycle, a continuous cycle. It it begins with learning. Uh, The second step is practice, and it really is ultimately all about the practice. Uh, The third step or stage is reflection. So you want to give the person a tremendous amount of feedback. Um, Come from a professional, ideally. Also come from peers. Also elements of self-reflection, self-feedback. Recording the person, seeing a playback is a great way to enhance that element. And then finally, the fourth piece is implement. And I think the implement speaks directly to the accountability. And I see that as twofold. Uh, First, on the individual, the participant, the learner that goes through the experience. Very important at the end of a session, whether it's a program, group-based program or one-on-one coaching experience, that they leave with a game plan. Uh, That they have a understanding of what they need to do to build the habits. They have prioritized the skills that they need to work on. And they have an approach to building those habits. Yet it doesn't stop just with the individual. I think it also is not just their manager, but the entire organization that's supporting those people. Uh, Ideally, there's a collaboration with that organization and a company like ExecCom to arrive at the right set of tools that that can reinforce the learning for the learner, can encourage the behaviors that they want to see, and ultimately can get the results that the business wants to experience. Now a great example of this is the work that we've done with UBS. That has been really wonderful uh, client for us for the last 10 years and in particular a program called the Wealth Advisor Program that we started in 2008. Anybody wants to know a little bit more about it, there's a case study on our website devoted to it. Essentially UBS had a challenge and the challenge was how do we keep our top financial advisors at the top of their game? They have about 7,000 US financial advisors. So you're looking at the top 15 to 20 percent of these folks. They came up with the idea of creating a very demanding, rigorous accreditation program, four-month program. Lots of classroom-based experience. We work with them to develop their client meeting skills, their client presentation skills, and some selling skills. Yet, it ends with a significant hook 
They need to, no matter what their production go, going in, they need to all go through the same experience and grade out. Uh, UBS has invited us in to, do, to offer some unique services. We have consultants that actually observe them and fill out scorecards on their skills. And it's, it's not just soft skills, it's also technical skills that they're embracing here. We have even gone to the point to train actors to play the role of affluent clients for these advisors. Huh. Wow. So the experience really does resemble real life. And it's with this that UBS has, has received some really fantastic results. So they track net new money for these financial advisors. And this group, about 1,000 people strong, that have gone through its production has raised by 40% compared to a peer group. They have also been able to really, really limit attrition. So it's a retention tool, too. And it really speaks to the creativity that they have and also the forward thinking, and there's a lot of friends from UBS right here, every year, how do we make this program better from a learner perspective to get the business results that we want? Hmm. Wonderful. Any other thoughts on accountability? I'll give you a quick one, um, kind of on the other side of what Joe's talking about. One of the things we send out are kind of classic level one smile sheets in terms of follow-up. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that's on there is line manager in account involvement. How do you rate your line manager involvement? And I'm going to separate this out because this is some of the stuff that we're doing with the work over in Europe. And it's one of the things that we score kind of off the charts in the wrong way. And basically, it's like my manager doesn't even know I'm going, doesn't know what I'm doing, and has no interest in following up. Right. So you kind of step back and say, OK, that's the right environment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the things we've done to try to change that, and I see some folks I used to work with out here that used to work in some of the teaming programs that we've done in the past, you know, looking at it and saying, the first thing we've got to do is get the manager to come to the programs. Right. So they know what we're trying to get their people to do differently so they understand it and they can then help reinforce it. Now, that's something we're trying to translate into our yeah. European organization so that we can get the line managers more engaged yeah. in it. But you got to get them, that, you can't expect them to be accountable right. if they really don't know what's right. happening or what you're trying to get people to do differently. Right. So if you can get them bought in from the front, then you got a better shot at changing the yeah. accountability. And I'm sure there are many people in the audience who have seen that happen in their own organizations mm -hmm. where an innovative program or coaching initiative happens at a mid-management level and then the feedback you get is none of my bosses are supporting <laughs> the things that you're asking me to do. So, you know, where do you actually begin?